Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kirk here. Um, today, we're going to be looking at um, the federal government judicial branch, and um, let's get started. Uh, today's essential question is, uh, what is the structure of the national government as set out in the U.S. Constitution? Um, you'll find this in Objective uh, 6A, and um, that's it. So without further ado, let's start. So the federal judiciary is made up of our federal courts. OK, this includes basically three types of courts. You have uh, U.S. District Court, you have U.S. Appeals Courts, and then most importantly, right here, you have the U.S. Supreme Court. We're going to use the abbreviation USSC right here because um, occasionally we'll see that on the SOL test. Um, the United States Supreme Court exercises something called judicial review. It's probably its biggest power. It's it's where it gets all of its power from. Basically, uh, what they get to do is they look at laws, they look at uh, executive actions and actions of federal agencies and departments, and make sure everybody follows the Constitution. For all purposes, I want you to think of um, the judicial system and the Supreme Court kind of like a referee in a football or basketball game or an umpire in a baseball game. They're there to make sure all the players follow the rules. The rules here being the Constitution, the players being the government. Um, the federal judiciary also um, tries cases involving federal law and interpretations of the Constitution. So anyone who violates federal law, a person or an organization, they will face that um, charge in federal court. Most of those cases would start in U.S. District Court. So before we go much farther, I want to go over checks and balances. How does the judicial branch use checks and balances on the other branches? So there are different ways, or really just a couple different ways, that the judicial branch can uh, limit the power of the other branches. Uh, let's start with the legislative branch. Uh, the judicial system checks Congress or the Senate or the House of Representatives. Remember, Congress is bicameral, meaning two houses. But they do this when judges declare acts of Congress to be unconstitutional, meaning Congress, you made this law. This law violates the constitutional rights of something or somebody. Uh, it's not going to exist anymore. And that's how it works. Now, on the other side, the court will check uh, the executive branch of the president when judges declare executive actions by the president to be unconstitutional. Basically, the president oversteps their power and that violates the constitutional rights of uh, some, an organization or somebody, then the president can't do that anymore. That is the main power of the judicial branch. That limit, that part of checks and balances is called judicial review. Okay, so um, this slide is a lot of our uh, judicial system vocabulary. Um, after I finish going over these words, it'd be a good time to pause and make sure that you have all this vocabulary. The first word is uh, jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is the power or authority over a court case. So uh, where does the court case start? What is the first court to hear that case? We also call the first court to hear a case, this is our second definition, original jurisdiction. Original means a court's power to hear and decide a case before an appellate review, like before it goes to appeals court. Um, I want you to remember this by just thinking the court where a case starts, the first court, that's called original jurisdiction. The next kind of jurisdiction, our uh, second kind, is appellate. Appellate jurisdiction is the appeals court jurisdiction, okay? Appellate is the part of the judicial system that is responsible for reviewing appeals from cases that have already been heard in a lower court. Usually this comes from district court, U.S. district court, and if it's the state court system, it usually comes from circuit court. Um, when a court actually um, 
tries to see if something follows the Constitution. That is that concept of judicial review. This is the last definition for this slide. Uh, judicial review is reviewed by the U.S. Supreme Court or another court to determine the constitutionality of a law. Okay, so if a law is deemed constitutional, then it stands. If it's deemed unconstitutional, they get rid of it. Okay. So now let's look at the organization of the federal courts. Okay, the U.S. has a court system whose organization and jurisdiction or power and authority comes from the U.S. Constitution. All I want you to know is the power and authority of the U.S. courts come from the U.S. Constitution. There are three federal courts that we're going to learn in class or you're going to learn on this video. Uh, the first one is the U.S. Supreme Court. That's the highest court in the land. They have that little kind of last step of judicial review. Uh, once your case is ruled in Supreme Court, that's it. There are no more options after that. The uh, lower court below the Supreme is called the U.S. Court of Appeals. They hear only appellate cases coming from U.S. District Court. And that third court is U.S. District Court, which is uh, the lowest of the federal courts. That is the court that would hear felonies and federal lawsuits. So um, we're going to look at a graphic organizer, but I want to give you a little acronym that helps us to remember the court system. Um, that acronym is SAD, S A D. And this acronym SAD is going to help us remember the organization of the federal courts. We have the Supreme Court, the U.S. Court of Appeals, and the U.S. District Court. And if you put those words together, Supreme Appeals District, it'll spell SAD. It's a great way to remember all that for the test. All right, let's move on. So now we're going to actually look at each of these specific courts. OK, their jurisdictions and um, some other facts. Let's start with the U.S. Supreme Court. OK, first off, the Supreme Court does not have judges. They are called justices. There are nine justices on the U.S. Supreme Court. They are appointed by the president. And they are confirmed by the Senate. Remember, those are some of those like checks and balances coming in from the federal um, federal government, the three branches. There are no jury trials at the Supreme Court. All decisions are final. And if they out or you know, if they rule a law unconstitutional, then legislation can be passed to revise the law to conform to those new standards issued by the Supreme Court. Again, that process is called judicial review. Now, the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, they actually have two jurisdictions. They can hear appeals cases from the U.S. Court of Appeals. And they have cases of limited original. Okay, now a limited original case, this is a type of jurisdiction, means the Supreme Court is the first court to hear that case. Now, this is only if a government sues another government, think like Virginia government sues North Carolina, or if somebody sues the president, if the executive branch gets sued or a case against the president, that would also go to the Supreme Court. Federal election stuff tends to go to the Supreme Court, and there's a few other things too, but those cases are called limited original. You can read all this in Article 3 of the Constitution if you want to read a bunch of legal jargon that nobody can understand except lawyers who went to school forever. Just kidding, but anyway, let's move on to the U.S. Court of Appeals. Uh, the U.S. Court of Appeals um, has judges, um, <clears throat> excuse me, usually three. Um, a, an appeals court does not have a jury. It's those multiple judges that hear the case. The only kind of jurisdiction they have is appellate. Now, in our federal court system, we have 13 judicial circuit courts in the U.S., and each of those have as a court of appeals. And they're not called judicial circuit courts. It's actually called U.S. District Court, but they intertwine those words, and I don't want you to get confused. Our third and final court. These are where federal felonies and federal lawsuits are heard, or is the U.S. District Court. Now, there is a judge in U.S. District Court, and there is juries in U.S. District Court. But I said may or may not be, because if you are the defendant, okay, if 
you are the defendant, it depends on your request. Okay. So if I was the defendant, I'm the one who gets to choose whether I want a jury trial or just have the judge hear my case to determine whether I'm guilty or innocent. Okay. The kind of jurisdiction you see in, um, in a U.S. district court is called original jurisdiction because any federal case starts in U.S. district court unless it's a limited original case, then it would start in the Supreme Court. All right. That kind of is everything you need to know as far as court organization, of, uh, the federal court organization, and um, whether they have judges and juries and their jurisdiction. Okay. So we're going to look at that kind of um, all over again. The organization of the federal courts, again, SAD is our acronym, Supreme Appellate and District Court. The jurisdiction, Supreme has limited original and appellate. Appeals has appellate and district court has original jurisdiction. Okay, you will have to remember those. So this is a complete organization of the federal court system. I kind of want to uh, bring it to your attention. Um, you'll see that it looks like there's four levels of courts, but there are certain uh, federal district courts that kind of have their own little thing. That would be military court, the Court of Veteran Appeals, and U.S. Tax Court. All that's located below, okay? But as far as the federal judicial branch is concerned, we have U.S. District Courts, U.S. Court of Appeals, and then the U.S. Supreme Court. U.S. District Court would also include international trade and bankruptcy. We'll talk about bankruptcy when we get to economics, but other than that, I don't need you to worry about that right now. Okay, if that concludes our lesson on the federal judici judicial system, um, if there are any questions, just uh, comment or shoot me an email. See you guys later.